Hey guys, Ice Knight here. And today, before getting into the theory, just want to say a few things. One, for those of you who wanted Pokemon's next main series game to be on the Switch, I don't see that happening. Because of A, Pokemon has put itself out as a handheld only genre. And the handhelds I am talking about is not something that's a hybrid like the Switch. It's something that you can bring with you and don't need a backpack for it to be carried around with. Not only that, they can be folded up. I know the original Game Boy and Game Boy Advance came out like that, but since the Nintendo Game Boy Advance SP, they've generally tried to keep a clamshell design so that the screens are protected while the game is being transported. The Switch needs its own backpack for that, unless you have a screen protector. Not only that, the Switch is a bit too expensive for the main series game to be on that right now. And the sales figures are too early if we are to have a Pokemon game on the Switch. I'm going to say it will take generally around two years for them to decide whether or not to put a main series Pokemon game on the Switch. Because of the sales figures as they are right now, it only sold like 2.7 million at the end of March. And for some perspective here, the 3DS sold 3.6 million at the end of March. Let that sink in there. Let that sink in. Eventually, the 3DS had a price cut, and we didn't get to Pokemon X or Y till around when they made... Uh, I think around 20, 30 million copies. Generally, that area will be the sales point of when you can expect a Pokemon game to be on the Switch if it was to. I don't see it, but it's possible. Another thing is, Sinnoh Remakes... It may just be a bit too early. If you look at Pokemon's track record, Pokemon Red and Green originally came out in 1996. Now then, Red and Blue came out here in the U.S. in 1997. And when their remakes got released, it was 2004. So for Japan, it took them six years. No, no, not six years. Four, eight years. And for America, it took us seven to get the remakes. Then... Heart Gold Soul Silver's remakes came out 10 years after the original games got released. Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby got released for the 3DS 12 years after their release. If you want to be honest, if you want me to be honest, I don't see a remake coming out at minimum till about 2018. I don't see that happening any sooner than that. I may we may get an announcement around the beginning of 2018 and get a new game around the end of 2018. But if we want it on the Switch, it would take longer. Now then, let's get into the theory. So now then, I'm sure most of you have seen the Pokemon Direct that came out with the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and have seen the Solgaleo and Lunala kind of looking like Necrozyla is fused to it, and I've seen people around here speculating that this could be another black to white to incident, but honestly, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, let's compare how they look right now to how black QRAM and white QRAM look. Now then, let's go back to black to and white to with black and white QRAM. If you notice, black and white QRAM look half and half of the material Pokemon required for both of them. However, when you look at Ultra Solgaleo and Ultra Lunala, you don't see the same here, thing here. You can obviously see that most of the Pokemon itself is Solgaleo and Lunala itself. So I started digging down a bit further into the Pokedex entries and I got this info from Cerebeer.net. Now then, I'll read each one to you separately. Cosmog, Sundex. Its body is gaseous and frail. It slowly glows as it collects dust from the atmosphere. Moondex. In ages past, it was called the Child of the Stars. It's said to be a Pokemon from another world, but no specific details are known. Cosmog, Moondex. Motionless, as if it's dead. Its body is faintly warm to touch. 
In distant past, it was called the cocoon of the stars. Moon decks. There is something accumulating around the black corp and its hard shell. People think this Pokemon may have come from another world. Sogolio, Moon Dex. It is said to have lived in another world. The intense light it radiates from the surface of its body can make the darkest of nights light up like midday. Moon Dex. This Pokemon is said to be the male evolution of Cosmog. At the activation of its third eye, it departs for another world. Lunala, Sundex. It is said to be the female evolution of Cosmog. When its third eye activates, away it flies to another world. Moondex. Said to live in another world, this Pokemon devours light. Dying the moon dark veil of the night over the brightness of the day. Necrozyla, Sundex. Reminiscent of the Ultra Beast, this light form apparently sleeps underground is thought to have come from another world in ancient times. Moondex. The light is apparently the source of this energy. It has an extraordinary vicious disposition and is constantly flailing off laser beams. Now then, if you notice something about Sun and Moon's dex entries there for Sogolio and Lunala, it both said they came from another world or they both fly off to another world. And if you notice from Necrozyla, he also, it also says that Necrozyla comes from another world. What I'm starting to think here is that maybe that these three Pokemon are definitely meant to stay in the Ultra World, as that is their possible home. And given that, the strange occurrence of the fact that Sogaleo and Lunala are the final forms of, of Cosmog, I mean, we've never had a legendary Pokemon evolve before. We've had some that do mega evolutions, but never ones that evolve into a permanent state that they will stay at forever. I mean, isn't that a little bit strange? And by the fact that they already can connect to the Ultra World gets even stranger and stranger. It's very well possible that Sogali and Lunala are from the Ultra World, but however, they're not at their full strength or what they were in the Ultra World. I have a feeling Necrozyla was actually used as an armament so that they can fight the Ultra Beasts with more powers. They may have actually been the rulers of those worlds or the guardians of those worlds in order to keep the Ultra Beasts from sort of leaking out, as you would say. Now then, if you notice that when Looker first spots Necrozyla, he does mistake him for an Ultra Beast. And I'll admit, Necrozyla does look like an Ultra Beast. And not only that, Necrozyla was zooming around on Melee Melee Island. And if you notice something, that was the first place where we met Nebi-Cosmog. Could it be that Necrozyla was drawn to Melee Melee Island because of Nebi's explosion that he did. But however, it did say that he was asleep underground. So here's what I think happened. Now then, in order to not confuse anyone, I'm going to use this from the moon perspective. We start off in the Ultra World with a Cosmog who is lost and alone. And scared of all the Ultra Beasts that are much, much stronger than it. Eventually, the Cosmog comes across an Ultra Beast that's not like the others. This one, for some reason, is a lot weaker than the other Ultra Beasts. So the two of them form a symbiotic relationship. However, the Ultra Beast becomes a part of Cosmog. It combines with it, but it doesn't completely fuse with it. Over time, the two's DNA begin to alter. As Cosmog's DNA changes, it now has the ability to evolve into a stronger form. It becomes Cosmome, then eventually Lenala. However, the Ultra Beast also gains the ability to evolve and becomes Necrozyla. The two of them are now basically one and the same Pokemon. As now, they are stronger than any other Ultra Beast out there and can travel between both the Pokemon world and the Ultra World. Eventually, somehow, 
Necrozyla and Lunala become separated. Necrozyla gets buried deep underground, asleep and unconscious. However, Lunala, being separated from Necrozyla, begins to become weaker, eventually reverting back to Cosmog, or as you would say it is a de-evolution. Then eventually the events of Sun and Moon play out. Once we get to the event where, and major spoilers for Sun and Moon here, where Lunala becomes itself again. Its third eye awakens, thus also awakening Necrozyla. However, Necrozyla is still underground and not moving around. Eventually, the Ultra Beasts begin to appear, and Necrozyla is now in a panic state, as there are now enemies within the area that it recognizes. Necrozyla is worried and needs to find its other half in order to become strong enough to fight off these Ultra Beasts. Now then, that's just Theory 1 on this. Theory 2 does kind of have to go with infusion, but not really involving Corliss at all. It could have been that Necrozyla was a part of both Sogaleo and Lunala, and that the armor form that they have on is what they originally were, and somehow they got detached and separated. But I'm still curious about why Lunala or Sogaleo would go back to being a Cosmog. That part doesn't make sense. Also, the part that Necrozyla kind of looks like an Ultra Beast, so I guess I'm trying to rationalize that out a bit. So, I'm leaning more towards the big theory that I just put out there, that Necrozyla wasn't originally an Ultra Beast that turned into a Pokemon by being coming so symbiotically involved with Sogaleo dash Lunala. And thank you to the page we are Pokemon or however it's pronounced, but I did see a picture of pointing out that Necrozyla's ability is Prism Armor, and I know that reduces about 25% of the blow from an attack. Well, super effective attacks, anyway. And I also found that someone in their comment section posted out that Necrozyla does detach all of his body parts to basically make a dragon head with two weird arms and possibly two small ECBC tiny feet. That was kind of interesting. It actually was a big portion to what led me to that theory. Also, I can't believe I didn't notice this earlier, but apparently if you look at the titles for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, you notice that the symbol for Sogali and Lunala's thing in there has now Necrozyla's star that's in the back of his head. Possibly that hints more towards the theory that Necrozyla is just something that's made to be armor for specifically Sogaleo and Lunala for some strange reason. I can't wait to find out why.